there. <laughs> Once a year, we're all allowed to say one curse word in here. And uh, I have the lyrics pulled up from, you know, the Planning Center app. And it's funny because we changed the word to donkeys in here. I feel like it's easy enough to change the words to donkeys. But I think, you know, it's kind of like maybe some comic relief for us. It's just kept in there every Christmas season. But, but amen. Um, I am Steve Jobs today. <laughs> I've had... I've had multiple people tell me that. So I guess Steve Jobs is preaching to you this morning. Um, but I do want to welcome my family. My parents are here. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I see some friends in the back from Hershey as well. Hello, Tara and family. These, got, these people are like family in Hershey. Uh, I have two brothers, so there's three brothers, and Tara has three daughters. So. And we're all in the same grades somehow. So, it, you know, we're really family. Uh, I have my friends here from U City, Steve, Raul, and Kenny. And I just want to say congratulations to Raul and Kenny for getting engaged yesterday. Congratulations. Um, here for you. Love you guys. But I definitely feel supported and loved this morning. Thanks for all of you guys being here. Um, I am going to preach a Christmas message this morning, but it's with a scripture that uh, maybe we don't normally go to on Christmas. So, first of all, Merry Christmas to you all. You know, it's that time of the year again. Uh, Christmas is here. We're singing carols. Maybe someone's caroling in your neighborhood. Snow has started to fall, right? We're filling up the stockings. We love eating cookies and drinking hot cocoa around this time of year. Even me, yes. My friends uh, will think that's funny because I'm kind of vegan, kind of, but flexibly around this time of year. But, uh, you know, I, I really appreciate what Fidel shared with us this morning. Uh, I forget where he's at, I just saw him. There he is. Um, the, the reason for the season. Why are we here? Why, why are we really here on December 22nd? When we could be home, just enjoying break, sipping some hot cocoa, maybe sitting by the fire if you got a fireplace. But this may shock you. What I'm about to say may shock you. I will say that Christmas is about giving gifts. Ooh. Yes, I will say that. Christmas is about giving gifts. And I'm going to try to sort of make a case for that this morning. All right? So bear with me. But Christmas has become about the gifts under the tree and there's lots of excitement with that in a way there's nothing really wrong with that right I, i'm not a parent but i'm sure as a parent you love giving gifts to your children you want to lavish them with gifts and to see the joy on their face we can go to the next slide it's something like that right that's my brother my older brother and uh that's not a Christmas present. In Brazil, we have a thing called Kids' Day, where the kid, you know how you have Father's Day, Mother's Day? There's a Kids' Day. And kids get a present on that day. And that, this is what my brother got on that day. But you just see the excitement on his face. He's biting his lip. He's like jumping out of his shorts that are tucked into his shirt. I had to make fun of him a little bit because he made fun of me in State College and that Chestnut Hill region, all right? So this is my chance now. <laughs> but there's lots of excitement around this time of year. And that's just a cute photo, you know? Like, it, it warms our hearts to see kids excited about receiving gifts. But we do have to be careful to not lose the reason for the season, to not miss the reason for the season. You can go to the next slide. Uh, turn with me to John chapter 1. Earth's tilted axis causes, I don't know, Christmas, <laughs> winter. <laughs> uh, John chapter 1. I want to kind of break, break down the message today into two parts. The first part being rejecting the reason for the season. Rejecting God's gift. These days, I think uh, we're accustomed to 
returning gifts, right? You get a gift that maybe just doesn't hit home or it's not exactly what you wanted. Uh, you know, your parents do your best, but sometimes you don't tell them what you want. And, and you return the gift. And we're almost flippant about it, like it's kind of no big deal. Um, that's kind of the time we live in. But if the gift is intentionally bought for you, if someone went out of their way and really thought hard about what to get you, how does that feel for the giver? To, for them to know that you returned their gift. I see some laughing in the audience. Uh, maybe that's happened to some of you. But it's kind of heartbreaking. Like it's some, we, we don't even share with uh, those givers that we did that because we're afraid of how it'll make them feel and it'll hurt too much. And they put so much thought and effort Christmas is about giving gifts, and God is the intentional gift giver to us. God is the intentional gift giver to us. Let's go to John 1 and talk about this gift that he gives to us. So in John 1, we're going to read a good chunk here. It's really an introduction, starting in verse 1. It says, In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There is a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory. The glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Out of his fullness, we have all received grace, in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God but the one and only Son, who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. And we'll stop right there. This is one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. It's packed with meaning. And if you're paying attention and reading closely, it even echoes back to Genesis chapter 1. Both start with, in the beginning. What does that tell us? That tells us that this is a very important piece of the gospel to pay attention to. God is setting up the story that's about to come. That's what the author is doing here. He's setting up this story of Jesus coming into the world, of this gift that God wants to give us. It introduces Jesus to us. And it's a little mind-boggling because it says that he was with God and he was God. And I'm not going to get all theological and get into that right now. But it's, it's pretty awesome to think about. And you can spend hours and hours just digging deep into the scripture. Next slide, please. I want to highlight a few verses of this. Because right, I'm talking about how we can easily return gifts this time of year. And in verses 10 and 11, we read that that is what happened with Jesus too. Verse 10 says, He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. 
He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. His own people. Imagine being the writer of a story and somehow you can enter the story and interact with the characters. And you know all the details, you know all the characters, you wrote them. And they don't recognize you. They don't recognize that you're the author. And they ignore you and kick you out of the story. Or a movie. And you wrote this movie and you're interact and suddenly you're out of the screen. That's kind of what this is like. Jesus wrote the story. Jesus created all of us. Jesus gave life to all of us in this room. He gave life to the world. When God in the beginning in Genesis, when he said, let there be light, spoke, and existence happened. The world, everything, the universe came into being. And then Jesus at this time comes and enters the world in flesh and blood like every one of us in this room. And he's rejected. And he's not recognized. He's not received. Next slide, please. Why was he not received? I don't know. I have ideas of why. Why was he not received? Let's read a few more verses. And I, I kind of jump around a little bit in these verses. Verses 14 through 17. It says, The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory. The glory from, of the one and only Son who came from the Father. He came full of grace and truth. 16 says we have all received grace in place of grace already given Jesus came to bring us grace for the law was given through Moses grace and truth came through Jesus Christ grace 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 repeated all over in these short few verses this is what Jesus came to bring he was full of grace and I looked you know I'm not a Greek scholar but I looked into the Greek definitions of grace and truth uh, to help help us connect with what that means a little bit. It's, we don't use that, great, that word grace too much regularly. But to be full of grace means to be full of kindness, to be full of favor, good favor towards man, full of good will, full of blessings. And we get into the truth, truth. I think maybe truth is part of the reason why they didn't receive him. Because he spoke the truth. Truth is straightforward. Truth is reality. But Jesus came. Truth is good. Jesus came only, only full of good things to offer. But somehow he became the unwanted gift. He wasn't recognized or received. He was rejected. Uh, I want to share with you guys a story from my childhood. So for those of you don't, who don't know, my family and I, we moved to the U.S. in 2003. And uh, I got to experience my first Christmas that year in the U.S. And uh, at first, my imagination of the U.S. was, it's the red carpet everywhere. That, that's literally what my friends in the neighborhood thought. <laughs> you show up and there's a red carpet outside the plane. Uh, Pokemon, like that was the first word out of my mouth to my family. Pokemon, you play Pokemon? Squirrels, you don't see squirrels running around in Brazil, not in all parts at least. You don't see snow. So all these things were getting me excited about moving here. And then we're walking through the Big Apple and there's just coins everywhere. And I was picking up all these coins. I was like, wow, I'm rich in the US. I'm rich in New York City. And then uh, the reason we were able to come is because our relatives generously took us in. They, they allowed us to live with them for a year, maybe over a year. Uh, but I remember when, when we moved to Pennsylvania, I, I heard about where we were going to live, and I heard that we were going to live in their basement. And to me, that conjured images of a uh, dungeon, like stone walls and leaky pipes. That's what I imagined. And so I remember being on the phone crying with my parents, telling them I don't want to live in a basement. And they reassured me, no, it's beautiful, it's nice, it's furnished, it's finished. And I showed up and sure enough it was. And I realized it was beautiful. 
And actually, the day I showed up, the next, the very next day, there was a huge snowfall outside, just feet of snow. But through that time, through that experience, our relatives shared food with us. My cousins shared their video games with us. They shared their home with us. And then Christmas Day arrives. And I don't remember many Christmas days uh, from my childhood. I don't, I'm not sure why. Um, but I, I don't remember, uh, remember those days very much. I don't think we ever got a ton of gifts. Parents, you know, doing full-time missionary work. You don't make a great living doing missionary work. But we were happy. And we get upstairs on Christmas Day. And uh, the living room is just stocked, full of gifts. There's maybe hundreds of gifts in there. I would say at least a hundred gifts. You can't see the floor. I'm serious. And, uh, you know, we get, we get up there and cousins are unwrapping gifts. And, uh, and then it, it kind of comes to me and my brothers. And we get, we get one. And we get two. And that's it. And as a kid, that's really disappointing. When you see all the gifts all around you, and all you get is maybe one or two gifts. Now, those gifts were cool. I kept those gifts for a long time. I had like, a, I got a safe, and I put all my things in there, and I had that for a long time. But just one or two gifts. And the comparison trap came in. I started comparing the gifts that we got to the gifts that our family got. And all of a sudden, I forgot about the gifts that I already had. A home in a desperate time. We had very little when we came to the United States. They gave us a home in a desperate time. They gave us food. They gave me a bed. We got to live with a generous family. And Christmas that day became all about the gifts that you see under the tree. And I forgot about the true gifts that I had in my life. And isn't that what, what can happen these days with the Christmas season? We get all distracted by everything that's going on. Giving out Christmas cards and trying to think of all the people you got to give gifts to. And, you know, trying to make somebody happy with a specific gift. And that's fine. Those things bring, bring happiness to us. But we can forget the true gift that God gives us. We can forget gift of being children of God. John 1 says that we can become children of God. That's a crazy statement. Are you in touch with the grace of God and what it gives you? Or are you distracted right now? Just focus on all the other goings-ons of this time. Now the second part, receiving God's gift. Let's not get distracted and forget the true gift God wants to give us. Now let's focus on what it's like to receive God's gift. Turn to Luke chapter 2. And I just want to look at an example of some people in the Bible when Jesus was born who were ecstatic about his birth. Luke chapter 2. Starting in verse 25 says, Now there is a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who is righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed him and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed 
and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There is also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. That's like 60 some years of being a widow. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day, fasting and praying, coming up to them at that very moment. As, he's, as Simeon is blessing them, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who are looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. Now that's what it's like to receive God's true gift with a good spirit, with gladness. They embraced the grace of God. They were unashamedly excited. They swept Jesus out of his parents' arms. Like that's not a normal thing to do. But Simeon did it. He's, he's an old man too. He's waiting, just waiting to see Jesus so that he can go in peace. They rejoice at his coming. What's interesting, both these people were waiting for a long time. We read that the woman, she was in the temple day and night for some 60 years waiting for the Messiah to show up. Simeon couldn't pass away. He couldn't die until he saw the Messiah. He could have been like 500 years old, I'm just saying. We're not told how old he is, but he was just waiting there, probably like a little Yoda, you know, until the appearing of Jesus. They understood what Jesus' coming meant. Some of the words used in these verses, they understood that he was going to bring peace to the world. He was going to bring salvation forgiveness of sins for all people, not just Israel, for all people.